What's the deal, YouTube? I'm starting this channel. This is called Jungle Rules. It's basically going to be about my experiences in prison and the things I've seen and uh, and experience. And I'm going to try to keep it as real as possible. Today, we're going to start off with a video about Green Rock which is located in Chatham, Virginia. I recently pulled 10 years in the Virginia DOC and I would like to share some of my experiences with y'all. I said, hell, everybody else doing it. Why can't I, you know? So I would suggest you get your mind right, you know, sit back, tighten up, buckle up. We are gonna keep it all the way a stack. Uh, this first video is to let you know about gangs and I can't say too much because you know I, I'm Crip so I, I'm gang affiliated myself and we're just gonna uh, basically you know give you a little story hope you guys enjoy it now this video is about a guy named Poe okay Poe was my old celly he's from uh, Virginia Beach and Roanoke, Virginia area, he uh, he, he kind of moved between the both, migrated between the both. Now, he's rolling 60s, I'm rolling 40s. So, he's in the cell with me, right? So, a situation had transpired with this dude, Philly, okay? He gets to fighting with this other old guy who, you know, there's a lot of wannabe boxers in prison and guys, you know, that... Some can actually box. Some will be out on the yard throwing little jabs and hooks trying to, you know, portray that image and, and scare other people off. Well, on this particular day, he gets into it with this other old head named Philly. So him and Philly get into it. The sales pop during door break, and they're in there tussling or whatever. Well, the dude, Philly, winds up biting this guy's, a portion of this guy's ear off. And the reason that we're in tune with this is because when he came out the cell, he said, yeah, motherfucker, try me again, and he spit his ear out. Now, see, I don't know the whole reasoning behind why he bit the guy old dude's ear off. Because, like I said, this guy had to be in his late 60s. He was in shape, but, you know, you could tell the guy had some mental issues. Well, when, when this transpired, everybody's like, oh, shit. And, you know, in prison, you don't really talk about issues that other people are having because you don't want to make something an issue that's not your issue. You see what I'm saying? Because you can actually get checked for that. Well, we see the guy spit his ear out when he comes out of the cell. Okay, whatever. Guess the police catch wind of this, and uh, they start... Coming in the pod and, uh, you know, everybody locked down, everybody locked down. So we're like, damn, we're going to be on lockdown for a couple of days, which means the only time you really get to come out is to go to the chat hall. Now, if it's something real severe, like a person passing away from a drug overdose, someone getting killed, they'll lock the compound down for up to a week, which is really hell being in that little cell, which is basically a walk-in closet and a bathroom mixed together and you living in there with another human being which is is horrible but your brain kind of adapts to it now back to the subject so we're on lockdown you know and uh they start pulling us out now mind you there's 96 people per pod in at this penitentiary and they're pulling each cell one by one questioning them bringing them back in the pod now, the thing about prison is, is when you're going out there getting questioned, you want to make sure that you're not out there for an extended period of time because then you'll get accused of dropping it off and or snitching. And you don't want that label on you because, you know, your name follows you. So, at the end of the day, they get to me and my Sally cell, which is about halfway, excuse me, my dogs are going crazy but at the end of the day they get to me and my celly cell and uh they take me out you know and they uh they question me 
and I'm in and out of there. You know, I don't know nothing. I ain't seen nothing. I said, look, man, just take me back to the pod. We ain't got nothing to talk about. You know the count. So then they get my celly out, and, you know, he's a big homie in this. You know, I ain't going to get too much detail. And like I said, he's rolling 60, but he's out there for an extended period of time, which I always thought something was suspicious with Poe, but we'll get to that later. So at the end of the day, they take him out. And the reason I'm saying that I always thought something was suspicious with Poe was he's always in the police face. You don't do that. You don't kick it with the police. They're not your friends. They're they not there to, you know, help you. They're there to get a paycheck and, and tantalize you and, you know, make you think about what you did and why you're in prison. So he's out there, but, you know, I, he, he also sings. So I'm like, okay, they're probably talking to him. There's an upcoming little church show or whatever. And, you know, anytime the big wigs come in, he's performing, you know, oh, gen want to be genuine-ass motherfucker. Can't, you know, can't really sing, but... You know, motherfuckers in the pod pump his head up. Well, so I ain't, I ain't think nothing of it. I'm like, all right, he's always in the police face, so maybe they was just chopping it up about another issue. So then, probably maybe a month later, I wind up getting into an altercation. Okay, this time, by this point, Poe had done moved to B building. I was still in A building. I don't under I don't really recall the reason and why, but I had a new celly, and we wound up jumping a dude, and I got put in, or he got put in the cell with me. Okay, so we're back in the hole. Okay, Philly's still back there, and I'm like, damn man, you're still back there. He's like, yeah man, they're trying to press street charges, and I'm like, man, how did the uh, police find out about it? So they're like, he's like, there's a child molester in the pod. Nobody knows this guy's name now. And they, they call him Candy Man. He makes candy for everybody, you know. So we're, uh, we're chopping it up. He said, man, I think it's Candy Man. I said, oh, yeah. I said, what was his name, cuz? He was like, uh, Jonathan Jones. I said, Jonathan Jones, you know, and that rang a bell. That's Poe's name. Now, when you go to these little hearings back in segregation, they're, they're to see, you know, whether they're going to let you out in the regular population that week. Well, and then you have an incident report. But if somebody snitches on another individual, they never have that person's name down. It just says an informant. Because you can imagine why. Because... If you if they did do that, then it would put a lot of people's lives at jeopardy. You have people in there that's never going home. You have some young, dumb gang members that are going home, but they just looking for clout, and they will shoot you. Slap, well, we call it shooting and stabbing. They will stab you over anything, much less snitching, especially in the gang life. So you know me, you know, I'm higher rank. So I said, man, I got the head at. I don't mention to him who... The, the Jonathan Jones is. But what they did was on the incident report, they actually read the police's copy and handed him the police's copy. So it had the CO's name and Poe's name. So I get the paperwork, you know, and I do what I'm supposed to do a, a, as a real guy, in my opinion at the time, you know. I get copies made of it. And I flood the compound with them. Okay. Well, you know, a lot of people in there, they got different moves. They got different hustles. You got guys that wash clothes. You got guys that do tattoos. I was the tattoo man. You got guys that, that, that sell dope. You know, you got guys. There, there, there's a hustle for everything, man. You know, make little cards, draw things, draw on handkerchiefs, so on and so forth. Mine was the tattoo man. Well, Poe, he got plugged in with, with a, a blood guy, not, not going to mention no names, you know. And he was getting, you know, getting the pack for this dude. So, as he's getting the pack in, a lot of guys were indulging, you know. Uh, at that point in time, myself included, right? 
but I never put that before my ties, before my gang ties. Because if you're you're a member, then I expect you to carry it the same way that I carry it. You feel what I'm saying? So if you're not carrying it in that aspect, then in my eyes, we're, we, ain't, we ain't the same. You're not, you can't throw them C's up like I could throw them C's up because you're, you're not like me. You're nothing like me. You don't know how to keep your mouth shut. You don't know how to be a man at the end of the day. To hell with being a gang member, you know, is, is being a man in my eyes. You know, mind your business. You, you get in trouble, you do your own thing. You don't drag other people down with you. And, and, and what, what baffled me about this situation was he had no reason to tell on this man other than he was a police-ass dude. You know what I'm saying? He was a police-ass dude from the jump, and we should have seen it. We should have noticed it. But we didn't, you know, we, I had an inkling, but I, I, I really couldn't, I couldn't put that out there without paperwork. Because if you do that, other guys going to be on your neck, other gang members. And then at the end of the day, you're going to have issues because that dude's going to say, hey, man, where's the paperwork? You don't put a bone on someone and you can't produce any paperwork. Okay, so then I hit the yard. They put me back in a building. He's in a whole nother building, but we're not separated by the fence. Now, the, the fence is C and D side. So I'm putting the word out. I'm talking to homies. They're like, yeah, man, that's messed up. That's messed up. So they're like, man, somebody got to put the work in. So I send a kite over to one of my homies from Newport News named Smoke. And he's like, man, that shit probably fake. I said, look, bro. Me and you like this. Since I came to Green Rock, me and you always been tight. I always kept it a band with you, bro. I'm the one that produced the paperwork. So then when they find out I'm the one that produced the paperwork, then people start taking it more serious. So he's, you know, denying it and this and that. I see him on the way to child one day. So next thing you know, he hit me off with a little something. I do just like that. Put it in his chest. Nah, bro, I don't want shit from you, bro. He like, why, wow, man? I said, you know what type of time it is. And this police right there, he started getting loud. I said, bro, you, you making a scene. You know, we, we'll handle it. You ain't going to do nothing. What just so happened, I was in the pod, I mean, in the chow hall with another one of the homies that was in his pod. See, sometimes you, you might intermingle with people, and that's where a lot of things get get taken care of in the town hall because if you got something going on in another building, that's the only way that you could take care of it. So, long story short, I said, look, bro, something got to happen. Y'all fools ain't neighborhood, but y'all need to handle this situation. Nah, cuz, hey, man, cuz getting the pack, man, we can't fuck that up, fuck that up. I said, man, listen, whether you agree with banging or you don't, you know what you signed up for. I said, at the end of the day, I know y'all not neighborhood, but it's got to be taken care of. So, now, later on that, that day, I'm talking to my cell. So, he's like, man, you want to cook some wine? I'm like, yeah, man, let's go ahead, you know, and get right. At this time, I wasn't getting a lot of money in the system. So, Probably a week goes by. We get turned up when it finally, when we pull it off. I'm drunk and I go to lunch. Well, then I see Poe out on the yard. So I'm coming back from the chow hall and he's going into his building. So he says something to me, I say something to him. So I go ahead, I put my scully on, he don't see me. And the other homies ain't in the pod. So I, I 229 in his pod, which 229 is being in an unauthorized area. We go in there. Uh, he don't see me. He's got his back turned. Now, it ain't no rules in this. I don't know if you got a kisu, a, a knife. I don't know what you got. You might have a lock and a sock. At the time, I got the knife on me. But only reason I had it at that time was to protect myself. Like I said, I had 10 years. I wasn't trying to run my time up. So long story short, I, I see him slipping. He's turned around facing the bed doing something. And I go in there 
and I see on the side of the table, he got a laundry bag. But, the, but then I look, excuse me, but then I look at the laundry bag and tied to the laundry bag is a lock. So I proceed to grab the laundry bag. And I said, what's cracking? And then he ain't even get turned around. I worked him with it. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, I'm working him with it. And he falls and curls up in the ball. I put the boots to him. None of the other homies are in the pod that, that were protecting this snitch, this low-down rat that would sell out your family, your friends, you know, to save themselves. So he's leaking. He's like, I'm good, I'm good. So I said, man, where's the work at? Where's the work? So I'm looking around, patting him down. Then I look right, like right up by his head. And it's a, uh, it's a glove finger about this long. I pick it up, put it in my pocket. So there was like 200 and some odd of boxing strips in there. <laughs> so you know what I do with that. I split it up equally between the homies and, and tell them like, look, if you ride with him, the same thing gonna happen. Now at the end of the day, I felt at that time that I was obligated to do that because that that was my only family in prison and we carried ourselves a certain type of way because certain things, the moral of this story is, is things on the street are not like things in prison. Being in prison is its own society and things are taken to the 10th degree, especially with respect. You know, yet, excuse me, thank you. You know, you owe bills, you pay it. You you tell a man you're going to do something, you do it. You know, if you're in gangs, you work out. You know, you, do, you don't discuss things publicly. You, it's just a certain culture in there. And, and the repercussions in there are way worse than on the street. But if you don't know respect, when you do prison, you will learn respect. I don't regret a day that I did in prison because when I came out of prison, I became a better man. Before I went to the penitentiary, I was stupid. I, I was doing drugs, selling drugs. I didn't have a grasp on life. I thought I was invincible. But these things, they change as you get older. So the moral of the story is, don't go to prison. Stay your ass out of prison. Do the right thing. And if you are thinking of doing something crazy, man, think about how you move, man. It's a time and a place for everything i like to thank y'all. I'm going to call this channel Jungle Rules. And uh, we're coming up with an intro, but I appreciate everybody that rocks with me. I'll be trying to shoot out as many videos as possible. Like I said, I'm looking for some software to where I can create an intro video. And, you know, in the future, I'll bring some guys in that I was in prison with, do interviews with them. Like I said, I'm going to try to keep everything a stack for y'all. And I appreciate y'all and God bless.